Okay, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome to the Polaris Trading Group PTG University Educational Workshop Series. And today is Wednesday, September 24, 2014. Uh, today's uh, program will be speaking about the uh, PTG methodology overview for uh, newer members, newer guests, as well as uh, it'll probably be a more of a review for our uh, current existing members. All right, and we'll give you an outline uh, primarily of the uh, major topics that we uh, focus on throughout the session, and then we'll take a look at some specific uh, uh, examples through our charts and the various charts that we use. All right, uh, so this presentation is, is primarily meant to be an overview rather than a detailed specific all right, of each of the segments that we have listed up there. So just to give uh, uh, a, a brief outline and what you will come to expect and uh, various uh, uh, examples of, of what we talk about. So the list that you see there, volume profile analysis, price structure, three-day cycle, statistical extreme zones, opening range strategy, bull and bear stacker setup, premium and discount, which is our CCI crossover strategy, uh, ATR, line, ATR stop lines, which we refer to as a point break shift, and then what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll take a look at a specific session um, just a few days back, and which actually had uh, a lot of, of the components uh, built into that one session because it was a, a pretty good uh, uh, reversal session off the high. So what we do is to begin with for our members that we send out on a day-to-day -day basis uh, a the, what we call the daily trade strategy, okay? And um, let me just show you an example of that, okay, through our website. And the daily trade strategy is sent out via email every day. Okay, there it is. It should have a projection up there now. It, it is sent out email uh, every day to our members uh, prior to the opening and in some cases uh, the evening before. Uh, you can see here today, uh, September 24th, uh, I had actually written this the, the evening before and last evening and to be sent out uh, for the next day. But generally speaking, everybody receives it uh, before uh, 9 o'clock uh, the, the main pit session opening. Now what we discuss in this particular um, report is we do a quick review of, over the prior day uh, and then we take a look at uh, a preview of what uh, may unfold uh, today and we sp talk about a uh, three-day cycle. Now generally uh, the market uh, expands and contracts. All right, So the markets go up and down, there's bull and bear cycles and generally speaking, uh, and it's a fairly well-observed phenomenon that the market uh, rotates in cycles of three. Okay, and uh, so we just simply refer to it as the three-day cycle. And now, uh, on each particular day, there is um, uh, a bias. All right, whether it's a sell bias or a, a you know a buying bias, and uh, so we anticipate what that day may unfold all right and again with this this is not a predictive process rather than uh, looking historically at observed uh, observed ranges historical ranges and then um, placing probabilities on what may, you know how the day may unfold and using those historical ranges uh, make projections rather than predictions about where the price may go all right, if certain criteria throughout the day unfold. All right. So uh, we just simply call them cycle day one, cycle day two, cycle day three. And in general, cycle day one is a day in which the price probes for a what we call a secure low. And then once that secure low is found, then the market can now build upon that and and rally. The general bias of a, of a, a three-day cycle is bullish. All right, so the, the overall market, you know, has a bullish background 
uh, and a bullish bias to it over over time. Now that doesn't mean that you know prices don't correct down and we have like mini bear markets certainly do. But even in mini bear markets, the the, the cycles are generally bullish. Okay, and the, and the simply the reason for that is um, the majority of the investors out there are long only investors. If you think about it, big mutual funds running trillions of dollar portfolios. Okay, they're long only. Yes, you'll have those hedge funds that short, but again, the majority of, of the real monies that are out there that are being invested are long only. So there is a natural bullish tendency. All right, so we use a three-day cycle, and so this is the type of report that you'll uh, uh, you'll receive. And what it does simply is it outlines uh, the cycle ranges. Uh, we handicap the odds of a rally or an odds of a decline. Okay, and then and again, as we make a little notation here that the that these are not predictions, rather they're you know based upon uh, observations in the past. And then I lay out uh, a couple hypotheses. All right. So in terms of the hypotheses, we we look at scenario one. All right, will be the bullish scenario. So if certain events unfold, all right, in terms of uh, the scenario one. Uh, we'll look for uh, pr higher prices. If prices fail to exceed certain uh, levels, okay, then the market can um, retrace and go lower. So we give you two scenarios. All right, that way um, we don't know which one's going to unfold, and then we just simply lay out a trade strategy of how we want to deal with uh, either scenario. And simply, our trade strategies uh, is primarily designed to stay in alignment with the dominant force, be it bulls, be it bears, and uh, and, and we take our cues from uh, what the market is doing rather than what we think the market should be doing. Okay, so again, uh, staying uh, in alignment uh, with, uh, with the market. Okay, so we'll receive that uh, first. And if we go back to the topics here, um, we combine a few things together and we'll discuss those uh, the volume profile analysis uh, price structure kind of work together uh, simultaneously there and then what we'll do is we'll take a look at the next stage of what we do after everybody receives the daily trade strategy is in our pre briefing uh, we take a look at the statistical extreme zones which is our, our statx um, target master chart that we look at and we'll take a look at that in a moment and then after we do that, we drill down into our opening range strategy. Okay, now that is our is is one singular number every morning. It's the five minute average, all right, the, what we call the five minute rotation midpoint, and that becomes a key marker. All right, a marker is just simply short for benchmark, so that becomes a key marker for us on a day to day basis. And there are several markers throughout the day, but that becomes. Uh, the, the first and foremost, and we actually have a strategy, all right, that 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 um, members can trade. Okay, so we have several of our members that um, that simply, you know, uh, they trade in the, in the mornings, and and then they have their you know uh, job commitments or other commitments throughout the session. So that what they want to do is they want to establish a position early in the morning, uh, in, in using the opening range strategy uh, as a guide. Okay, now it's not foolproof. All right, but it does offer you know a very um, uh, high odds of being um, you know the opening range. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, there's been studies that have gone back well over 50 years, and the phenomena simply is that the opening range and originally started with the opening range price itself. All right, we use an average of five minutes, which is essentially the same thing, but it originally started with a with a price. And the phenomena was that 70-something uh, percent of the time, the higher low for the day or within the higher low range for the day will occur during the opening range. So if you are thinking about, you know, the type of, you know, what should we be doing today? Should we be long? Should we be short? What's the tendency of the market? All right. And we want to position ourselves, you know, institutional uh, traders out there want to position themselves at the best of, you know available um, location. So if the odds favor, for instance, 
that in, in a particular cycle day that the market is more likely to go lower, such as a cycle day one, the odds favor a decline on that particular day, right? Using the opening range strategy, and again, we'll see this in our charts just in a few minutes, is that you can use that opening range five minute marker as a way of establishing a position, okay? Now, again, you know, trading futures, most day traders don't have a high tolerance for, you know, stops, okay? You know, six ticks, two points, and, you know, they're gone. Uh, the market, is, unfortunately, you know, doesn't um, care how much, you know, what, how many, what type of stop you're using. It's just really, you know, it's going to uh, jostle and move around. But once it finally gets a directional move going, it's going to... Uh, uh, you know, it's going to move. Um, the idea, though, is if you don't want to use futures, you can certainly use an ETF, all right, in a stock account. And, uh, and that sometimes gives, uh, you know, traders a little bit different, you know, better breathing room. You can use the leverage ETF a little bit. And uh, it may not be as, you know, as volatile. But so there's a lot of different ways where you can establish a, you know, a long short put position, okay? I mean, if you, if you like options. But anyways, in the event there is that the key statistic here is that 70 some odd percent of the time, the higher low will be within the context of the opening range. That is a pretty good edge, all right, to think that, you know, you could probably be accurate up to 70 percent of the time, you know, uh, of, of getting the higher or within the higher the low range all right, for the entire day. All right. So those are pretty good odds over time, of course. And then as we come down uh, through the session, we, we start um, looking for our various setups, okay? Now, we're primarily trend traders, okay? We don't like to be counter trend traders. Uh, we are reversion traders if prices have gone to extremes uh, and then looking for a reversion to the mean. But again, that will be dependent upon what type of day we have, whether we have a range day, whether we have a trend day, okay? Again, we want to stay in alignment with the primary uh, force of the day. And then the trade setups that we look at, and we'll take, again, a uh, little bit further look at those, will be uh, what we call our bull and bear stackers and uh, premium and discount, which is our CCI crossover strategy. All right? Now, these are uh, very good uh, trade strategies that help get us on board a developing trend early. And as the trend is unfolding, allows us to get on the trend all right, through the course of the trend on pullbacks. Okay, so that so that allows us to get in at a premium or a discount. And as part of our um, uh, key tools that we use, we use an, an ATR, an average true range stop line, but it, we use it in in a in a little bit different way than uh, in the way we've designed it uh, to really help us identify uh, when a shift is valid. Okay, um, and so what we refer to that as a, a point break shift. Okay, so that's the outline. And so what we'll do is you've already seen the uh, three-day cycle uh, daily trade strategy report that we send out. Uh, what we'll do now is we'll jump right into the uh, charts and uh, we'll we'll just highlight what the various charts uh, are and uh, and what they uh, what we use them for. Okay, so let's just uh, go to the charts here. Let's start off with the uh, Target Master uh, Stat X zone chart. Okay, and okay, so everybody should see that. Now we use a 60-minute. You can use a 30-minute. Okay, uh, but what this does for us is is it outlines on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, various statistical extreme zones. So that's the, simply why we call those stat X and ranges. Okay, so these are all proprietary calculations that um, I have used and learned over the years uh, working for the investment banks uh, as a market maker. Uh, some various professionals that I've uh, uh, met over the years but primarily all from investment banking um, field, okay? So um, we used to use these as, when I was a market maker, we used to use these on a day-to-day -day basis on individual stocks. 
All right, and you know, we show these now graphically in the room, but when I was a market maker, we didn't have the graphics all right, like this. We just simply had a spreadsheet, and the spreadsheet was just full of, of numbers, okay, you know, and uh, the zones were highlighted on the spreadsheet, if you will, the, the cells of, of a spreadsheet, you, know, you can highlight them with colors. And so they were, um, so the prominent zones were, you know, displayed uh, on the spreadsheet. And so we knew when we were making a market in an individual stock or an index, uh, you know, or type of commodity, we knew what were the key levels for the day. All right. And we simply, um, you know, use those as, as prices reached those, you know, uh, specific zones. Uh, we would then, you know, again, as a market maker, you know, I was your ultimate fade trader. All right, I was buying when everybody was selling and selling when everybody was buying. And, you know, so we really, you know, if you really think about it, uh, it it's critical for, you know, if you're buying when majority of people are selling and vice versa, uh, it would be very important for, for you to under, you know, to know where you are more willing to put on larger commitment, okay, uh, in making markets. Now, again, even as a market maker, we were not buying everything on the way down in a trend and we would totally be you know losing uh, we would simply you know get ourselves aligned you know with the primary you know trend but we would be buying and selling on the way down okay but when prices reached inflection points key statistical extremes that's when uh, you know the investment banks uh, make some big commitments okay and that's usually when the public i.e. the retail trader is pretty much uh, toast, okay? And uh, so it would be important as a retail trader to understand where the investment banks, where the big money is uh, placing bigger bets, all right? Now, at least have an understanding of it. doesn't mean you have to shadow trade them. It just means you have an understanding of it. But that provides uh, a viewpoint that which most you know, retail traders don't have. So what we've done here is we've taken all those years uh, of experience that I that I've uh, that I have from the investment banks and put them together and, and created a graphical display of uh, these statistical various statistical zones. Okay. Now these are complementary to the daily trade strategy that we use. Okay. So there's there is a bit of an overlap of uh, the levels that we highlight uh, in the daily trade strategy and the levels that we see here on the charts okay they're not uh, necessarily uh, verbatim but there there are very uh, there are quite a bit of similarities okay so again it's a uh, it's a guide all right now what I've simply done here is I've just overlaid you know a ribbon all right our what we call our fair value uh, zone and our dynamic fair value zone and and simply that you know you'd be surprised how many people will take a look at a chart and and you ask them well what's the trend of the chart and uh, they simply can't tell you or they have a mind block uh, it's not that they don't know or they couldn't figure it out it's just that um, what many times what you're looking at or looking for sometimes you just simply don't see and that's called inattentional blindness okay um, you know, years ago, I used to call it <laughs> simply, I used to refer to it as if it was a snake, it would have bit me. Okay. It was right there in front of me, but I didn't see it. All right. And, and a lot of times traders have difficult time seeing things because they don't know what to look for. All right. So that's something that we try to bridge the gap, you know, in our methodology. We, we outline what we're looking for. We outline, you know, with our education, ongoing education again you know the ongoing education it's not a it's not a crash course it's not uh, you know a weekend plug everything in and, and then you come out Monday and you know it. it this is an ongoing process and it's a process that you know needs constant review and refreshment all right so you know whatever we discuss here today again you'll see it again and again you know in in the future so as an overview we, we simply will overlay you know what the primary trend is and uh, and then use these statistical zones, uh, you know, to um, uh, to handicap, you know, when prices have gone e extreme, so we can look for um, you know opportunities, you know, coming off those levels. 
So uh, not to get too much into detail about it, but this is where we start. Now I talked about volume analysis, okay? And so what we add here is a volume profile to the right-hand side. And, uh, and again, um, we're not purists in terms of market profile. Um, and you know, our methodology is not primary to market profile. Rather, it's a more uh, holistic amalgam type approach used bringing in a lot of different concepts uh, there's a lot of folks out there just teaching market profile, and it is good, but I think it's incomplete, okay? But if you blend it, you know, the concepts of, of uh, market profile or, or simply volume analysis with the idea of statistical ranges and, and uh, cycles, okay, um, I think the picture gets a little bit clearer at least hopefully for our members, in that, in that uh, they see, you know, uh, they understand why certain zones become more important, right? It's not just that there's a lot of volume, but although that's a component, I mean, anytime there's high volume, you need this high commitment on both sides. But that does not necessarily mean it's a predictor of the next move, all right? So again, it's, it's an ongoing process of understanding. So volume analysis does take a key role uh, throughout the process, okay? Now, that's the, uh, these two topics. What we do now um, in our pre-market briefing, that, which begins at 9.15 a.m., uh, we go into um, speak about you know, what the key levels are from the, from the daily trade strategy, and then we, uh, we'll highlight what's happened in the overnight session uh, just prior to the uh, 9.30 opening in, in, uh, in, uh, in New York, in 8.30 in Chicago. Okay, so uh, we use the uh, uh, target master uh, static zones uh, as that uh, pre-market brief. And then as the day begins, so we're coming right out into the, the opening here at 9.30. What we then do is we look for um, our five-minute opening range rotation midpoint. So on this next chart that you'll see is a five-minute chart. It's a day session only. So we, we want to see the gaps, all right? Gaps are important to us. And what I've drawn here in, uh, highlighted in, in blue, all right, cyan, I think is the color, is the five-minute midpoint of the first five-minute bar, okay? Very simple, very straightforward. There's, there's nothing magical about it except that um, how we use it, all right? So it becomes our first uh, marker for the day. Okay, so if you take a look here, um, and again, I won't get into full detail of how we use it, but, but again, um, you'll notice that uh, the day opens here, five minute average is first uh, uh, wide red bar here down at the bottom left, and then it, it marks the, the midpoint of that bar. All right, very simple, straightforward. Uh, what happens then subsequent? We don't know whether the, whether the price is going to auction above that line or below that line, right? Again, we, have, we may have some idea based upon the day type, right, which cycle day it is. But uh, that aside, price here in this instance uh, rotates lower, okay? So there may or may not be a trade for us right Im immediately. But what we want to be looking for on a day-to-day -day basis is when price returns back to that level as it did here, okay? Since price opened and then auctioned lower first, and then the retracement back up to the opening range, okay, this provides a marker for us. That becomes resistance for us, if you will. And that's where the opportunity is for us to take a short trade. So if the initial thrust was down, okay, then the retracement back to the five minute average is where we're gonna be looking to take a short in anticipation of the next move down, okay? If it fully develops, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't, but the probabilities are high that it will. So when we drill down into our execution charts, this is the zone that that's where we want to be looking to take uh, a trade from. Okay. Now, as you can see in this particular session, you know, uh, prices retraced back up to it. Uh, another instance, 
uh, early afternoon and then retraced back down. So that kept, uh, you know, you can see how that acted as, as a dynamic resistance point. All right. So the market was not able to auction above the opening sentiment. So the opening sentiment here was negative until later in the day into the closing rotation. OK, and then it held pretty much the opening average there. All right. Um, the next day, though, now notice, if you will, where prices uh, found support. OK, at these low zones. Again, I'm not talking about the low, the lowest tick. I'm just talking about the zone of where it found support. All right. And then the late day support here, the late day low. OK, so the day opens weak finds buyers during that five minute rotation okay <clears throat> and then prices stayed here as you can tell right above the five minute average now that becomes again a marker all right and having observed yesterday's action the day before that there was support around that zone looks like around the uh, 1972 73 zone <coughs> the opening gap if you will all right was bought and then that next five minute bar right there and again in our trade room uh, we use the you know tick charts and at that point we would be calling for if price held above that five minute average we're looking to buy it all right so we can buy it aggressively and again part of buying this aggressively would be the fact that price held that zone in, in the prior session and then the goal would be at least getting back up to the prior uh, opening okay and there would be a high probability of closing that minor gap and but price kind of gave us a clue that it wanted to move directionally and it gave us a clue in the prior session where price did in fact exceed the opening range and then kind of pulled back here all right and then the following uh, morning where there were some sellers right on the opening but they weren't very strong and then again, prices held that opening range. So we were able to establish a position or near to that line, near to that opening range average. But once price exceeded the prior day's range opening, and then of course the prior day's high, it was game on. Game on to the long side. Now, of course, there was a bit of a you know chop and slop and then a pullback. But as you can see, this pullback never gave up ground right from the prior day so all this action sets up using the opening range strategy as a key marker right the idea of of what the day you know may unfold um, you know to to be all right so again using that a little bit let me just move the chart over a little bit and you can just we'll see some other examples all right now with that just prior day example I showed you, keep in mind the statistic that I gave you that about 70 some odd percent of the time, the higher the low is going to be right, during that opening range. Right? So I mean that was pretty much on the low of the session all right, that day. Uh, this wild day here was Fed day. All right? So it opened and it was pretty neutral. Uh, price traded above it, came back down, did not hold it. Okay, So it came back down through it and then bounce back up a little bit and notice what happened right failure to get back above it right again it opened up and it traded above it so the expectation would have been hold the five minute average for higher prices but it didn't so again there was didn't appear to be any buy signal there for us and then prices traded down through and then as it came back up it stalled failed to go back up so that created a little bit more of a downward bias okay so again you can still use that five minute uh, average and of course this was fed day so this kind of you know swung around but you know, notice the prices pretty much closed where they opened so this was kind of a uh, although a wild day uh, you know if you if you woke up on the average and woke up again at the close all right you said well nothing happened that day well it certainly did but you can see that um, uh, so again, that five-minute average is is probably one of the single most important um, levels, okay, on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the next day, gap up. Now this is an interesting one because we do have a gap up, 
We'll get our five minute average, all right? Trades a little bit around it, find some good sure footing, and then notice what happens. It pulls back to the five minute average. What does it do? The other day we saw, just the day prior, we saw that it pulled back and cut through and then got weak. What happened here? Pulled back and held, all right? And then it worked its way higher. Now, again, this, but this sets up the condition. We will, again, we're looking to buy it off that five minute average or near to it. And so that is at least a three or a four point, you know, move off of that five minute average. So that turned out, you know, would have turned out to be a very, very good trade. All right. As you can see, the rest of the market kind of went sideways for the rest of the day. So, uh, again, we're really kind of talking about, you know, trading around that average early in the morning. All right. Again, a lot of our members are, are uh, trade early in the morning and then they, and again, like I said, they go off to uh, jobs and so forth. Uh, but again, keep in mind, 70% of the time, all right, the high or the low for the day is going to occur within that uh, opening range. Now, the next day is the one we want to talk a little bit more about is um, September 19th. And this was the day after, uh, two days after Fed Day. Okay, where we ended up getting a very, very strong buy gap, bullish gap. Okay, so everybody was excited on that particular day, all right, that the gap, uh, market gapped up. We were speaking live in the room. I do recall this um, very clearly because this turned out to be one heck of a day for us, is that I cautioned that because although price gapped higher, the fact that price during the opening range here, marker, right, our opening range rotation midpoint line, price could not get back above it. See right there? There is a high probability, all right? Now, gap players, you know, will always say, oh, the you know, market's going to fill the gap X percentage of the time. Well, that may or may not, you know, and there's people that data mine out there and, and uh, there are, you know, some, some educators that just simply will, will talk about the opening gap and, and, and what the odds are of gaps being filled and so forth. Um, when you look back, you know, historically, you can always kind of curve fit everything, right? And kind of say, you know, X percentage of the time. But, at the, but when you're live trading, Statistics don't really mean a whole lot, all right? They're not going to help you get into a trade. They're not going to help you manage the trade. You know, what you need is you need a, a core understanding of what certain, you know, concepts and things mean and how to trade them. And that's what we try to, you know, demonstrate to our members on a day-to-day -day basis is, is uh, again, we don't call out trades, but we highlight the concepts and how to use, you know, the tools and, and let them you know, each individual, you know, um, work the knowledge into their own particular trade plan. But the goal here is to use the five minute average as our initial marker. So on a gap up day such as this, we were uh, cautioning in the room live that if price was not able to get back above and hold, well, we simply call that conversion to convert a level and hold above that level, the probabilities, and again, we trade probabilities, not certainties. The probabilities favor in a situation like this where there's a gap up and a failure to hold above the five average, that there's a high probabilities favor a gap fill. Okay? I'm not going to tell you statistically how, you know, 70, 80, 90% of the time, but the probabilities do favor a gap fill. So this is what as you can see, definitely happened. Not only that, prices went even lower, all right, back down to the prior opening range before it found some support, okay? So this is the day I want to focus on, and we're going to stop here in terms of the opening range uh, concept because I want to uh, go specifically into the opening range trade and then how we blend it with uh, the ATR, the uh, bull and bear stacker, as well as uh, the premium and discounts. Okay, so again, we're, I'm kind of leading it from the big picture, the beginning of the day, all the way through some examples. All right, so what I'll do now is I'll work that same day. Now we're going to switch over to a 
tick chart, which is one of our core base charts that we use uh, day to day. It's a 750 tick. Now this is a little. There's a lot of things going on here, so uh, I didn't um, I didn't want to eliminate uh, too many things uh, on the chart. So I wanted to kind of leave it as you know we see it throughout the day. But just kind of follow along with me for a moment, okay? So some of the things, let's just let me highlight to you first, uh, as you may not be aware of, uh, some of the components that we have here. Uh, number one, this blue cyan line here, this is our ATR stop line, all right? And when price shifts, okay, right here, this is what we call our uh, a point break, okay? So that, that's what we'll, we'll talk about when we get to the ATR. Um, and then uh, the uh, magenta arrows here uh, reference our discounts. And again, discounts are pullbacks within the context of an uptrend. All right? And premiums, as we'll see shortly, are pullbacks within the context of a downtrend. Okay? The grayish line here is the dynamic midpoint okay so high low midpoint of, of the session as it's going along all right so the bull atr line is the cyan and the bear atr line after the point break is this red line here so we're, we're able to use that very effectively throughout the uh throughout the session okay and it becomes actually an important part of uh, uh of what we do in, in some of our trades that we take uh, if you see this blue cyan line right here, and you can see the, the marker over to the left hand, uh, right hand side where it says ORRMP, that is the opening range rotation midpoint of which we just discussed on the five minute chart. So we're able to overlay that on our tick charts. Okay, so again, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, you know, look at the bigger picture. Uh, and, and again, most of everybody that I understand have more than one screen now. Many of you have three, four, five screens. Uh, so that you can able to you're able to place different charts on, on, on different screens But the core chart in terms of an execution is, is what we use here So um, let's just kind of walk through the various aspects of, of what happened that particular day and And again this particular chart does not show gaps. All right, and that's why we use that five-minute chart um, and it's a little bit difficult to, to see that uh, how price would have been more likely to close the gap here, all right, without having an understanding of the opening range and looking at, uh, you know, the five minute chart. So in the overnight session, all right, so let me just uh, highlight a couple things here. Let's take a look at the five minute uh, opening here. So there's the uh, opening point right here, and we'll mark that, we'll call that, uh, I don't know, let's just call that red. All right, now it'll be the opening. All right, the white line again denotes the point break of the ATR line, and uh, so everything else prior to that was was all during the uh, overnight session. Okay, so the end, the close of the tw uh, 18th and the beginning of the 19th there. So uh, price uh, spiked up into uh, during the overnight into the session high at the at uh, 1450. Now. I do recall that on our uh, statistical extreme X zone chart that and, and our range charts that this was a very very key uh, level a, a big marker uh, type zone all right for us so in essence what we'll do is we'll just kind of highlight as as that is as upper resistance all right as we would start today so as we start the session okay uh, and again this red line denotes the opening what we want to be observing is a couple things. So as the, the session began, uh, price had uh, rallied up, all right, following this ATR point break. And then what this becomes here is it becomes dynamic resistance for us, okay? So although it looks as though everything is, you know, ready to go, you know, uh, and we have this, this bullish gap, right, from the day prior, we want to observe during that five minute rotation period what what happens against this uh this blue cyan line when it dynamically paints so once the opening begins it counts down and as the five minute period um comes to an end it paints this line 
okay so we know exactly what our opening range rotation is so having gapped up we're looking for the question we're trying to ask during that opening is uh, if this gap is bullish and again we don't see the gap in this chart we saw it in the prior chart if this gap is bullish price should hold above that line All right that's the idea that's the expectation if price does not hold above that line we call into question in this example all right prices will probably you know maybe retreat lower okay now we're not sure of it but we want to walk through it and see some evidence okay first bit of evidence that we had here was the fact that our ATR uh, line shifted so we had a bearish point break all right there was enough energy to push prices down through that ATR line that blue cyan line over here to the left rally back up but not exceed and and hold above the bear ATR line this is what we call ATR bear okay so this became a resistance point early and that was right on the opening so again as we observe that five minute opening range average what do we observe prices rotate down bounce back up where does it stall right at the five minute average okay prices rotate back down to the prior uh, low pivot over here to the left found a little bit support rotated back up again where did it stop five minute average okay now at this point now we already know what happened in the prior chart we, we saw that you know the, the price closed the gap but as we're trading live in our in our room what we're observing here is we're, we're discussing the fact that price bounces up and not able to get above that five minute average so we would be uh, discussing aggressively with our members saying that's the spot where we're we'll looking to take trades short from okay now you can see how the color bars here the paint bars change from uh, green to dark green to yellow to red um, this is part of our buller what we call our bull and bear stacker okay and as there's the transition between the uh, uh, bullish uh, component in price action to bearish this help gives us a full guide to what we should be in you know the bias that we should be taking and what type of trades should be we be looking for so the fact that the opening range average failed or rejected price gives us confidence to continue to look for short trades all right and there are various ways which we won't discuss today uh, of getting into short trades so there we have our uh, opening range strategy we have an ATR which is a core component of what we do and then now we have a uh, double failure here and a shift in market bias and price action bias okay remember we're trading price action all right we're not necessarily trading moving averages but the moving averages are there to help give us context all right and but the fact that structurally price was not able to trade above that opening range uh, midpoint tells us that we ought to be at this point somewhere in here around this 2010 zone we ought to be looking or trading from the short side until price breaks back up through that level and, and, and shifts the market back up okay so our uh, members in the room what we would be doing is we'd be taking uh, short trades using our bear stacker formations all right and then and so this it would be in this zone uh, somewhere in here whether it's right off that five minute average or somewhere within the context of this zone that's where we'd be looking to establish short positions where would you stop be very simply we have an ATR line above us we would uh, place our uh, stop point you know somewhere you know up here okay and then the position sizing uh, that our members do maybe two contracts three four one you know depending uh, but again point is structurally your stop would be you know slightly above that ATR line and then simply you're just going to hold the position all right and looking for your particular goal some of you are looking for two point rotations all right which we normally do others may uh, you know establish a, a multi-contract position and take some off and finance the trade and then hold the position until 
you know, a new uh, development occurs. Okay, so um, so bringing into view the bull and bear stacker, and again, this one would be the bear stacker. All right, uh, as we move along, let me just uh, uh, bring the chart out a little bit. And our next component of our methodology, again, this day really unfolded quite well. All right, and the next component of our tra trade strategy would be um, the premium and discounts. All right, so as a quick review, the bull and bear stackers, okay, are a way to get on a early developing trend or directional move, okay? The premium or discounts allow us to get on board a uh, directional move but on a pullback, okay, not early in the move, but you know as early as we possibly can when they develop. So as you can see here, price rotated down, and then we got a uh, corrective uh, bounce. Our software automatically identifies the premium condition. It gives us uh, an arrow alert, a bar alert, and a reference price of which we can use potentially as an entry point or right around that point. All right. So this would be the spot where, you know, uh, and again, this is all occurs live, all right, and we have what we call our uh, Scanalyzer dashboard uh, that also uh, alerts us, all right, to, uh, to, the, to the premium condition here. And so that would be a short trade for us. And this allows us to get in alignment, uh, you know, with the developing, you know, down move, and as, as you can see. Now the ATR line here, uh, will be a trailing ATR line, a standard trailing ATR line. And again, having an entry, you know, at some point, let's just say the entry, uh, let's just call the entry somewhere, you know, in here, okay, uh, your stop would be simply above the ATR line, okay? And then, uh, you know, continuing on, you know, prices, you know, as they continue to, to rotate lower, you know, you could be taking your profits, you know, accordingly. All right, and then again, as uh, prices reached the low point and retraced once again, okay, there was a another premium that developed, okay, and again, you can see now the momentum here, the direction is really taking taking shape. All right, and then now keep in mind on that five-minute chart, right? We were looking for potentially a gap close. All right, so I believe somewhere around this area, this is where the gap actually was closed. All right, and, and we didn't have to predict that. What we just simply do is read uh, the, the core components of, of our method, you know, price, pattern, momentum, in that order. Price level, okay, everything begins from a price level. Pattern, some sort of a pattern. Some people may use candlestick reversal patterns. Some people... Uh, you know, it could be simply a, a bear stacker pattern like we have here. Structurally, the price, you know, failed at a particular level. And then uh, we're getting a, a uh, price shift here. Okay. And we want to, you know, that's a pattern for us. And though we want to get on that, we want to get on that trade early, as early as we possibly can. All right. At a reasonable price. And when, again, we're not shooting for the highest or lowest, but a reasonable price. And have the confidence, and this is where a lot of traders you know, fail, they understand concepts, but they, but they, they lose, you know, they lose with the confidence. They lose that they don't have the confidence. Um, again, by understanding and practicing and reviewing constantly, constantly, right? Deliberative practice is important right, for our members. Um, you know, when the day is unfolding, it, you know, I, I don't, you know, we don't explain this like we, like I'm doing here during the, uh, during the day. Okay, uh, we're all trading actively, so we just simply say looking for a bear stacker entry, uh, short the bear stacker, failing against the opening range, let's get on short. Okay, um, premiums, discounts, again, these are all uh, identified for our members. Uh, it's up to our, each of our members to jump on these, you know, and trade them accordingly, and we go into more detail in our membership uh, educational material uh, that, that deals specifically with you know, the entry, uh, management, exits, and so forth, okay? And uh, this brings us pretty much to, uh, you know, the, the conclusion of uh, our presentation in terms of an overview. These are the key components that we, um, 
uh, that we look for all right, on a day-to-day -day basis. And again, as you can see here, uh, price finally on this last premium finally hit a low point and, and then we got a, a bullish uh, shift. Okay, so at this point, when the ATR finally reshifted here, okay, uh, at this juncture, uh, the short trade, as far as we're concerned, at, the, at least at that point, the short trade is complete. And the sequence to the downside is complete. Now then we just go back, we, go, we start a new observational uh, you know, mode in terms of you know, what we're looking at. And, and we, then we start identifying the dynamic uh, levels once again. And then looking for whether or not prices you know, are holding or above or below you know, key uh, levels. And again, this is kind of a process that we just go through daily, every day. We look for the same components, uh, the same setups, uh, the same criteria on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Nothing changes. And, and, you know, part of being a consistent, profitable trader is you need to have a consistent approach, okay? And so, although the markets may change in terms of uh, character and volatility, all right, um, they, you know, what what we want to do is, is we want to be steadfast in our approach to taking the trade setups that we have found that have historical significance, that have historically proven, um, you know, uh, very profitable in the past. And then each trader has to, you know, work on, you know, their uh, technique on entering the trade, managing the trade, okay, and so forth. And we help everybody through those that process. Uh, you know, we can do it individually. We don't necessarily talk about it, you know, specifically throughout the session because it's very difficult to do that. But uh, the education provides, you know, um, guidance all right, for everyone, um, you know, to, to at least put the probabilities, you know, on their side to succeed. Okay, isn't that what we all want to do? So um, this is <clears throat> so this is the uh, overview of the core components uh, of our uh, methodology here, and and again this is just an, uh, a kind of a brief overview. But again, the topics just as a, a, a review here is the volume analysis, uh, price structure. We spoke about three-day cycle, right, which is the daily trade strategy all our members receive. Uh, we begin the uh, early morning, uh, pre-morning brief at 9.15 at discussing the STAT-X zones, if there's anything significant on those to look for. Um, Five-minute average opening range strategy begins the day. And then simply we start combining all these features, all right, um, looking for our bull bear stacks, which are uh, early trend defining setups. And then premium discounts will come next. In terms of as the uh, as a trend is, is unfolding, uh, is there opportunities there? Uh, the ATR stop lines again. Uh, that's kind of in between where those bull and bear stack are set up. That will help define a structural point break. Okay, and, uh, and that's the end of the uh, presentation. Uh, so I hope uh, this was a good overview for uh, newer members and and guests that are that are viewing uh, this video and a good review for current members uh, just to get a refresher in terms of you know what should we be looking for uh, in the type of sequence okay so as always uh, you know and, and just to finalize the the presentation here um, you know we have certainly we just have to mention some of the disclaimers that the uh, CFTC requires us uh, to do that you know any hypothetical results all right, um, you know, from what we do here, again, we're educators, you know, we're not um, uh, commodity trading advisors, okay, so all of this, um, you know, need to take into consideration, make sure, you know, you have enough financial, uh, financial wherewithal to, to handle losses and so forth. But uh, that being said, we, we uh, you know, I strive very, um, uh, I, I strive very hard to uh, keep all our members on the correct side of the market action. Okay, um, it's important that we don't, you know, especially in today where the algorithms are, you know, nearly 70, 75 percent of the day uh, session, is that um, we want to make sure that that uh, we're we're in alignment with them. We're in alignment with the, with the sh the strength. Okay, uh, on that particular day, 
don't try to impose and this is a this is a, a real you know important cautionary note here for everyone don't think that your opinions really matter i mean they do and and they can be you know very well respected but the market does not really care about your opinion or my opinion they what the market is it's it's a collective of everyone's opinions all right those that are bullish those that are bearish they place their bets and the market will respond to to those bets and the sizes of those bets you know and the magnitude you know in in its own way for us to impose what i think the market should be doing rather than what it is doing is a very dangerous uh you know way to approach the market simply what we want to do all right is, is stay in alignment you know with with the uh, with the underlying force uh, and clearly as an example um yesterday okay or the past three days since fed <clears throat> we've had quite a bit of a, a sell down all right um today uh you know, everybody was expecting further weakness, and ultimately, as it turned out, today was a very strong day, and uh, from the low to high, it reached the, the maximum range uh, anticipated uh, on today was cycle day two, 22 and a quarter points. So from the low to the high, 22 and a quarter points into the close, right? Uh, there were a lot of shorts that were, were sure as, you know, that, that the market was going lower, it was going to break down, um they lost heavily today okay because they were they were uh committed to a position they were committed to an idea to a bias okay um we don't do that all right well again we're being flexible if the market wants to go higher and the and the buyers are stronger we're going to be in alignment with that we're simply going to look to take bull stacker positions all right when they when they pr are presented to us we're going to look to buy discounts we're not going to question whether or not the market should be going higher or it should be going lower simply we're going to accept the fact that it is it has it is doing it and then how do we take advantage of that where is our trade opportunity okay so it's very important that we stay in alignment and that's one of the core features that we that i talk about on a day-to-day -day basis with our um uh, with the daily trade strategy as we begin each each session okay so i hope this was uh informative for uh the new folks and and, and the guests that are that are viewing this for the first time and it's certainly uh, a, a good uh, review for our current members and uh that will conclude our presentation today thank you very much for attending and for viewing it and we'll look to see you uh in our trading room on a day-to-day -day basis to uh to see how these uh, concepts and, and trade and ideas unfold on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, thanks very much, everyone, and uh, good trading to all.